All right, my dear students, this is accounting coach ARD, and the topic of the day is company accounts. Uh, now we are solving a full-length question today for company accounts, which includes an income statement, a statement of changes in equity, and a statement of financial position, uh, aka balance sheet. Uh, now let me read the question for you first. This is a, a CAIE examination question for 2010 for variant paper 21. Uh, I may read the question for you. This is a 40 marks full length question. Uh, SGC Limited is a trading company. The following balance are extracted from the books on 30th April 2010. Uh, now I may suggest you that uh, you make a printout for this question or you can, may keep it in a separate device you, so you may revisit it again whenever we are solving this question. Uh, the link to this question is available in the video description. Uh, you may see the description and to, you may download the notes file and print it out for future reference. So I'm reading the question for you. There is an opening inventory previously known as stock, but the newer name that the examiner uses inventory at 1st May 2009. Then now in this question, year ends at 30 April 2010. So the year is ending 30 April 2010. Year was started at 1st May 2009. It is opening inventory. Now we have raw material purchase and we have purchase return. The, the, the term raw material is given just to confuse the student because this question is of a company and not of a manufacturing account. So the term raw material does not make any significance here. This is just simple purchase and this is a purchase return. Purchase return also known as return outward. Then we have a carriage inward that is transportation cost that is used to bring in goods to the business that we have revenue, sales, office expenses, office salaries, these are all expenses. We have a non-current asset known as property, land and building. We have computer equipment that is cost. Then we have an office fixtures cost. Then we have provision for depreciation also known as accumulated depreciation. This means the total depreciation charge till date. Then we have other operating sunrise expenses that is day-to-day -day expenses, general expenses then we have expenses uh, other than that advertising and marketing then we have debenture interest loan interest already paid uh, we have an authorized and issued share capital uh, authorized share capital is the maximum number of shares that company can issue at a given point in time uh, also known as registered nominal capital this is just the limit of the business and this is not to be included in the balance sheet this is just a limit authorized Issued share capital is the actual number of shares that the company has issued to its shareholders. This is important issued share capital. This is always included in the accounts. Now we have 100,000.5 ordinary shares and the value is given 50,000. Now what does this mean? This is important. 100,000 is the number of shares. 0.5 is the nominal value that is the original value or known as par value of each share. Uh, the original value uh, then the, the shares that we issued originally were issued at 0.5 each now if I multiply 100,000 into 0.5 we'll be getting the figure of $50,000 now if I'm already given the figure for $50,000 and I'm being given the value of 0.5 I can calculate this number of shares also how 50,000 divided by 0.5 in order to get 100,000 shares now we have $200,000.18% preference shares uh, so I may suggest if you haven't gone through the concepts lecture for this company accounts you may immediately go through this and then revisit this company accounts question because if you are not familiar with the concepts you may be unable to solve this full length question now these are preference shares preference shares are special class of shares these are given uh, preference or priority over ordinary shareholders and what terms we need to give them priority in two things basically uh, in order to pay dividends dividends are the returns that the shareholders of the company get for the amount that they have invested in the business uh, if you want to pay dividend you need to pay the dividend to preference shareholder first uh, the and if the preference shareholders had been paid uh, previously then then only you are supposed to or allowed to pay to ordinary shareholders that is dividend then if you need to return the money in the case that the company is bankrupt we need to return the money to preference shareholder first now even uh, only if the preference shareholder have been paid in full uh, then you may pay or return some money that that is left to ordinary shareholders if anything is left 
then we have a non current liability that is what is this 8% 8% is the amount of dividend or the percentage of dividend that we need to pay each year so 200000 multiplied by 8% becomes the total uh, value of dividend for preference shareholder then we have a non current liability that is debentures debentures are loan 12% debentures mean we need to pay interest of 12% on which amount that is $50000 then we have general reserve account then we have a profit and loss account also known as retained earnings profit and loss account the new one name is retained earning uh, and there is another name that was previously used by examiner that is accumulated profits start of the year we have a retained earning of 1300 then we have trade receivable debtors then we have provision for doubtful debts then we have trade payables then we have bank balance now after the bank balance there are some additional information given which are very important let me read these for you first we have note one closing inventory uh, closing inventory is always given in uh, notes and the opening inventory is always given in the list of balance or trial balance whatever it is given now at the end of the year office expenses were prepaid prepaid we have paid these expenses for uh, future years so prepaid is always deducted at the end of the year now i hope you have gone through the sole trader final accounts before moving on to this company final account then in office salary there are accrued accrued means the expense has been incurred but had not yet been paid so we need to pay this so what we need to do we need to add the expenses at the end of the year Uh, for accrued and we need to deduct the expenses that we have uh, paid extra for the upcoming year that is a uh, prepaid expense this prepaid expense is also known uh, as a current asset also shown as a current asset is statement of financial position uh, and then this is the accrued expense which is shown as an accrued expense that is liability then we have depreciation uh, in a depreciation we have uh, 25% reducing balance method depreciation uh, for computer equipment then office fixtures we have a 20% straight line i have hope you have also gone through the topic of depreciation then we have provision for doubtful debt that is 5% now at the end of the year directors transferred 20000 to general reserve paid the full dividend on preference shares and paid ordinary share dividend of 0.1 per share now there are basically two requirements in this question we need to make income statement and then we need to pay make a balance sheet now in this question it is written uh, you may need to make an appropriation account as well now we won't be making the appropriation account instead we'll be making a statement of changes in equity so appropriation account is being replaced by the newer version and that is known as statement of change in equity now in the exams you not you cannot expect to uh, get uh, this uh, appropriation account now uh, because appropriation account has been replaced by a newer uh, statement which is known as statement of changes in equity now uh, in order to move forward i may suggest you so you may need to keep a print out or a separate copy of the question in front of you so that we may revisit it again as we need it so now we are making a statement of uh, sorry income statement for sgc limited we may start with the name of the company that is heading sgc limited then income statement for the year ended now year ends at 30 april 2010 the uh, the heading should be put if it's not already given in the question but if the question already has the heading you do not need to write it again uh then we have the format will be starting with sales which is also known as revenue we need to deduct return inward from that if the return inward figure is given in order to arrive the net sales figure then we have a cost of sales value then less cost of sale cost of sale is calculated as opening inventory add purchases i hope you are familiar with these concepts uh, from the sole trader income statement format then we have a return outward also known as purchase return then we have a carriage inwards that is transportation cost then we need to deduct closing inventory in order to arrive the figure of cost of sale now cost of sale written two times firstly as a heading and secondly as the final answer for the question then we uh, if we deduct net sales with cost of sale we will be getting the figure for gross profit uh, now we'll be adding other income then there are expenses in order to get the profit figure now in the income statement of uh, sole trader and in uh, income statement for a company there are only one difference there is only one difference and what is that the interest on loan or debenture is not 
written in as expense uh, rather we need to calculate the profit figure that is profit before interest first then in the end we will be showing interest separately uh, in order to get the final profit figure uh, we'll be doing it in later and now we'll be starting with the value of sales revenue already given in the question 370,000 there is no return inward we'll be getting the net sales figure so if I have not made the format previously uh, uh, if there is no return inward or sale return in the question we do not need to write this figure we just need to write the 370 value in the last column so but if I have already written the format doesn't make any difference just put a hyphen in front of that dash and then let's move forward the opening inventory is given in trial balance 48500 uh, then we have a purchase figure we need to add up then we have a purchase return we need to deduct this then we have a carriage inwards then we have a closing inventory node 1 in order to get the figure for cost of sales you may see where are these values coming from I am not wasting time on this then we have a gross profit value there is no other income in other income we may write uh, anything that is received rent received commission received or receivable then we have a discount receive or there can be decrease in provision value as well or there may be a gain on disposal now in this question there is increase in provision and not a decrease in provision we may start with the trade receivable figure that is debtors figure in the question the trade receivable debtor is given 42,000 now there is no bad debt also known as irrecoverable debt if there is a bad debt that needs to be written off first we need to deduct the bad debt figure uh, from this 42,000 now we will need to calculate the percentage figure so there is no bad debt figure in this if you may read uh, adjustment number uh, 4 there is a provision percentage doubtful debt percentage of 5% we need to multiply 5% of onto 42,000 in order to get the total provision for uh, 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 carried forward that is 2100 now we already have a provision figure which is given in the question uh, you may see the provision for doubtful debt is already given the question uh, of previous year of 1500 now this 1500 figure need to be increased to 2100 now the difference between the two is 600 if the provision is increased during the year this is known as an expense for the year and if the provision is decreased during the year this is known as income now we have expenses such as office expenses now the office expenses are already given in the list of balance 19750 but if you may see in notes in note 2 it is given uh, it is prepaid expense now if you have already paid extra for the upcoming year that is 2011 so we need to deduct this figure in order to arrive the figure for this year that is 19300 now the amount that we have deducted in here will also be shown as a current asset in income uh, statement of financial position now we have office salary figure 59300 now again in office salary there is also adjustment as accrued we need to add accrued figure in order to get the total figure this means this expense have been incurred but not yet paid uh, we need to add up here as well and we need to show it in statement of financial position uh, in heading under the heading of current liability now we have a depreciation you may be aware that the different methods of depreciation straight line reducing and revaluation now the computer equipment is, is supposed to use the reducing balance figure uh, now the cost value for computer is 80,000 we need to deduct the provision for depreciation figure 28,000 now the value that we'll be getting uh, is a net book value and if we multiply it with a 25% uh, uh, percentage we need to get the depreciation value now we have a office fixture depreciation using straight line depreciation so in straight line depreciation we just need to multiply the percentage with cost now why there is a difference between the two in, in reducing balance the uh, previous year provision is also being deducted but in the straight line there is no provision uh, no provision need to be deducted we just need to multiply with the percentage directly now we have other operating sunrise expenses we need to charge in here now we have advertising and marketing this also need to be charged so all of these expenses are totaled here now uh, if you may see closely you have uh, you may have a closer look and you may see that there are no loan interest no loan interest or debenture interest has been charged yet why firstly we need to calculate the profit figure before interest profit before interest now at the end of the income statement we need to show interest separately on loan or debenture now the question specifically state that we have a 50,000 debenture of 12 percent so what do we need to do we need to uh, apply 6,000 uh, interest in total 
Now what I have done this, uh, firstly we need to multiply 50,000 to 12% in order to get the total interest value that is 6,000. Now what is this adjustment? Uh, as you may be aware the total interest is 6,000 and out of that the half amount 3,000 has already been paid. Now question specifically mentioned finance cost debenture interest paid 3,000. We have paid this 3,000 and 3,000 is still owing. Owing means accrued. Now the examiner, what does the examiner does? Examiner always shows the accrued or prepaid adjustment in here. Uh, so the total figure is 6,000. Out of that the half value has been paid 3,000 and the half value is still owing. We need to show this owing figure. Now the final figure for income statement arrives that is profit for the year also known as profit for the year and or profit after interest. Now after income statement I will be made, making another statement known as statement of changes in equity. The question says that this, this is the older question for 2010. This states make an appropriation account but appropriation account is no longer being made. It is being replaced by statement of changes in equity. Uh, now uh, you may have seen my other video lecture uh, known as Dharolia Limited and in the Dharolia Limited question we just need to make a statement of change in equity from start. So in this question we have made income statement first then the second statement is statement of change in equity. Now there are uh, columns for each equity item one is ordinary share capital if there is a preference share capital uh, we can also make a column for this but uh, if you may see in this question there are no changes to the share capital account whether it is ordinary share capital or preference share capital so therefore I am not making a separate column for preference share capital but if the columns are already given in the question you may need to fill in that as well then we have a general reserve column then we have a retained earning. Uh, so the total equity column is optional if the format is not given you may skip the total equity column so the question if the year is ending on 30th April the year would be starting on 1st May 2009 that is start of the year then the values for this are given ordinary share capital total value is given in the question as $50,000 general of total value is given for previous year that is 40,000 and retained earning is given by the name of profit and loss account in this question is 1300 then we have some adjustment for this profit for the year uh, now where does this profit figure come from profit for the year come from income statement we have already calculated profit for the year we need to insert this profit figure into retained earning uh, profit for the year always increases our retained earning column and if there is a loss for the year god forbid uh, the loss for the year will be deducted from retained earning as well then we have transferred to general reserve if you may see adjustment number 5 we have transferred 20,000 to general reserve we need to increase the general reserve and from where we need to transfer the general reserve we need to transfer it from a retained earning column now see one account increases and another account decreases uh, now the example is the same if I put out money from one of my pockets right pocket and put it in the left pocket I am neither rich nor I am poor so therefore doesn't make the difference on the total equity of the company but still one account increases and another account decreases. Then we have dividend paid uh, in note 5 it is written uh, we have paid the full dividend and preference share. Now there are two types of shares here one is preference share and one is ordinary share. Now preference share dividend is paid in full. If you may see the preference share column the preference share uh, amount is $200,000 and we need to apply an 8% on this in order to get the total figure that is 16,000. The dividends are uh, generally pay paid from retained earning but if the retained earning has been exhausted that is used completely we may use the general reserve figure. Then we have ordinary dividends, ordinary dividends of 100,000 shares uh, ordinary dividend adjustment is given note 5 in note 5 it is given that we are paying ordinary dividend of 0.1 per share now if we may see if you may see that the total number of shares see the total value is fifty thousand dollar for ordinary share but we do not need the value right now we need the number of shares number of shares is given in the question hundred thousand shares we need to multiply hundred thousand shares into point one that is ten cent in order to arrive the value of ten thousand dollars Again, whether it is preference shares, preference dividend or retained, uh, div sorry, whether it is preference dividend or ordinary dividend, all of the dividends are being paid by retained earning column. And if, if this is not available retained earning, we can use general reserve as well. So this is the, achha, there is a one difference in this and the difference is that uh, 
in a preference see if the dividend is given as a percentage that is 8% we need to apply percentage to that dollar value that the dollar value for preference share is $200,000 but if the preference share if the shares if the dividend is given as per share that is 0.1 per share we need to multiply it with number of shares 100,000 shares and not the $50,000 value so I hope you are getting this the percentage is always applied to the dollar value and the per share dividend if it's given it is applied to number of shares then we have a total value that is closing value so there are only two adjustments in here uh, we have not issued any new shares during the year if the SGC limited have issued new shares during the year this is also be shown in statement of changes in equity uh, with the name of new share issue so the 50,000 value remains the same the preference share will also remain the same we have not made a column for that uh, because of shortage of space then we have general reserves of 60,000 at the end of the year we need to add these two figures and deduct all these three in order to arrive there total value of 65 now we are done with the income statement we are done with statement of change in equity and last but not the least we need to make a statement of financial position in order to consolidate all of these values now the statement of financial position uh, starts with the name of the company then there is the heading uh, statement of financial position previously it is was known as balance sheet but the newer term is statement of financial position uh, this is based on the accounting equation assets is equal to capital plus liabilities we'll be starting with assets then we have a non-current asset then we need to make three columns cost accumulated depreciation and net book value so if you may see the question there are some non-current asset firstly we have property land and building so property land and building cost is already given in the question the cost is given as 250,000 now there is no depreciation in this uh, value that is there is no depreciation on property so therefore we will be writing the same value in net book value as well now in a computer equipment column there is the cost of computer equipment that is 80,000 that we have originally bought the computer equipment for 80,000 then we have a provision for depreciation also known as accumulated depreciation so the provision for depreciation for computer equipment shows that the provision was previously 28,000 you may see the question you may refer the question 28,000 it was previously and in this year if you may see we have already calculated depreciation as 13,000 now if I add 28 and 13 I, need, uh, I may arrive at the total figure that is 41 so the total figure is 41 now if I deduct uh, 41 from the cost value I will be getting net book value means uh, I bought the computer for 80 now it is being depreciated till date for 41,000 and then the remaining value for computer is 39,000 then we have a office fixtures office fixture again I'm uh, moving a bit fast because right now I'm not uh, showing you how to calculate depreciation right now our focus is on company now in the office fixture and fitting uh, we have a cost figure of 40,000 now previously the depreciation for office computer is given 15,000 and right now we have calculated the depreciation of 8,000 so if I add both of these figures 15 plus 8 I'll be getting a total value of 23 so uh, if I deduct 40 uh, 23 from 40 I'll be getting net book value 17 now the uh, cost and accumulated we do not need these values anymore we need to close it here only but the net book value figure will be requiring the total will be totaling this net book value now after non current asset we have current asset current assets are always stated in the order of decreasing liquidity now it takes uh, most time to sell the inventory we'll be writing inventory first then after that trade receivable it take lesser time to take out collect money from the debtors then we have other receivables then we have bank and then we have cash closing inventory figure will be shown in here because we'll be making balance sheet at end of the year that is 57,000 now why I'm using the second column uh, I'll be using second column and if I add uh, all of these values of the second column I'll be getting the total in the third column now I can go from second to third but not from first to third then we have a trade receivable figure in the question it's given 40 2000 now why I'm using the first column because there is another thing that need to be deducted from here and this trade receivable figure that is provision for doubtful debt now if I did a provision for doubtful debt from this trade receivable figure I'll be getting uh, 
net trade receivable that is 39,009. Now, where do I get this figure? I'll be applying a 5% to this 42,000 in order to get 2100. Then we have other receivables. Other receivables, uh, it's given in the question note 2. There are prepaid expenses or office expense. There can be prepaid expense or there can be accrued income as well, such as commission receivable or rent receivable. Then we have a bank balance already given 3450. So this is the total figure current assets. If I add both of these two figures in order to get the total assets value. Uh, now after assets, I'll be using capital and liabilities. This is based on accounting equation. Now in the sole trader column, uh, sole trader question or in a manufacturing account question, the capital account is very simple. Uh, what we need to do, we need to show opening capital, then we need to add profit for the year, then we need to deduct uh, drawings in order to get the closing capital figure. In a partnership, uh, we just need to write capital accounts and current accounts in this capital section. But in a company specifically, we need to write equity and reserves. Now in the equity and reserves, the same headings and the same uh, labels will be used such as being used by the examiner. Now if we refer the question, the question specifically states authorized and issued share capital. Authorized share capital is the maximum number of shares that the company can issue also known as registered or nominal capital. Uh, and the issued share capital uh, is the actual number of shares that a company has issued. Now the value uh, for this will be uh, using the value of statement of change in equity. But the names that we'll be using are, need to write the exact wording used by examiner. That is 100,000.5 ordinary shares. And the total value is 50,000. Then we have preference shares, $200,000, one eight percent preference shares. And the total value for this is 200000 given in the question. This is the total capital figure. This is the to total amount invested by shareholders in a company. Then we have a general reserve. Again, the general reserve value will be used by the total value that we have already calculated in statement of change in equity. These are the total values. 50,000 for ordinary share capital, 200,000 for preference share. We have not made preference share column here. Then we have a general reserve closing value 60,000. Then we have a retained earning of 6,500. So these are the closing values that we'll be writing here. Then we have a profit and loss account also known as accumulated profits or retained earning closing value. Now the total value of this is known as total shareholder funds. Now if we write this label we will be getting uh, one mark from the examiner that is total shareholder fund for this total value. First of all we are writing assets this is the same as for sole trader. Then we'll be writing equity and reserve. This is the capital section. This is different for company and sole trader and a partnership. Then in the last, we have a liability. Again, we'll be using non-current liability first. Then we'll be using current liability. So in a non-current liability, we'll be writing uh, debentures. Now the full name for debentures need to be written. That is 12% debentures in 2020. 12% is the percentage of interest that need to be paid on the loan each year. And 2020 is the repayment date that we need to repay the loan in 2020. In the question, the year is given 2010. And if the loan mentions 2011, then the loan is a current liability for us. Now, because it is uh, more than one year, this is a non-current liability. The total value is 50,000. Lastly, we have a current liability, which is the same as sole trader. There is trade payables is given and other payables. Then there are two things that come in other payables. One is accrued expense. This is obvious. And the other thing that comes in here can be prepaid income, which is not in this question. And in other uh, payable, we have an office salary that is accrued. We need to pay it. And another other payable is finance cost that is loan interest. So we have already seen that our, out of this 50,000 multiplied by 12, 6,000 total interest, we have only paid the 3,000 amount that is half. And the other half still needs to be paid that this is the current liability, other payables. Now, if I add all of these values, this is current liability. Uh, now this becomes total capital and liabilities. Now if the asset side always equal capital and liability side, this means our balance sheet is balanced. So I hope you would like the video and if you already did, kindly do share your precious comments and do share this channel with all of your other friends and do subscribe my channel if you haven't done that. So thank you.